One, I, uh, I appreciate everybody being here today. Uh, these decisions are not easy for coaches, uh, the families, and the program. This course of action is something we didn't take lightly. I met with Coach Lunsford yesterday and informed him of the change in leadership. It was in the best interest of the program. Uh, Coach Lunsford handled the news uh, professionally. You know, I have the utmost respect for Coach Lunsford, uh, not only as a coach, but as a person, uh, a husband and a dad. I appreciate everything he's done for this program and both, uh, both occasions as he served as a coach here in this program as an assistant and a head coach. You know, when you make these decisions, you look through the lens of what's in the best long-term interest of the program. We have a strong vision for Georgia Southern football, and we're not meeting it. Our current performance doesn't match our vision of comprehensive excellence. After meeting with Coach Lunsford, I met with assistant coach Kevin Whitley and asked him to serve as interim head coach for the remainder of the season, and he has agreed to do so. We're very fortunate to have someone on our staff uh, with his head coaching experience and playing experience like he does. Coach Whitley was an All-American here, and he knows what Georgia Southern football is all about. I met with our team, coaching staff, support staff, and team captains yesterday. Our student athletes are at the forefront of everything we do. And I wanted to reiterate that we're here to support them in any way that we can. I have the utmost confidence in Coach Whitley and our staff to lead our program over the next eight games. We have a lot to play for. And I know our young men will continue to prepare and play as, as hard as they've been playing. Uh, and they'll continue to be uh, ready to go this Saturday against Arkansas State. The search for our new head coach begins immediately. Uh, we want to we be on an upper trajectory as a program. We want to have an identity of being highly disciplined, blue collar, and tough. We're looking for the best possible candidate. We will look at head coaches and assistant coaches. We will work diligently to keep the search process confidential. There will be a lot of rumors and windows about who the next coach is going to be, uh, but it's not practical to respond to every rumor or bit of speculation. I would ask that everyone remain patient with the process. As I talk to candidates, if word gets out, particularly via sources that they interviewed uh, or our leading candidate, I'm going to assume that they're not interested in the job. It is important to manage a process in an effective manner to hire the best football coach and staff possible. I know I can count on Eagle Nation uh, to remain patient through the process and fully support the new head coach and staff once in place. The traditions of Georgia Southern football are unparalleled. Coach Eric Russell, six national championships, the best fans in the country, two members of the College Football Hall of Fame. We have more tradition in the last 39 years than anyone in the country. We can be better, and I'm fully confident we will be better. All right, guys, we'll take questions. Uh, if you can identify yourself the first time you ask a question. Josh, that's my yep. Josh Aubrey, State's hey, Herald. Jared, the, uh, how much of an impact did the video that surfaced yesterday with yep. the players on top of the roof of the bus uh, drinking beer? You mentioned disciplined. You seem to stress that in your opening statement. How much did that have to do with why we're here today? Well, Josh, I'll tell you, I mean, everything as part of the decision-making process was factored through, uh, through yesterday. And so I share with our coaches and staff all the time that every day is an evaluation. Every day has a sense of urgency to it, uh, coaches and staff. And so what I can share with you is everything up to the time of the decision was factored in. Of it, did that have anything to do with what happened Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, if you look at this weekend, through yesterday afternoon, everything from the time I got here back on April 1st all the way through yesterday afternoon was factored in. Had that not happened Saturday, would you possibly have waited to do what to, – to let Chad go? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an overall – it wasn't a, a one issue, Josh. I think it was a comprehensive review. And, and so I've, I've been on the job now a year and a half. And, you know, so I was at the point where it was time for a new direction. Will the players that were on top of the bus be disciplined? Yeah, so that, that process is working its way through the, through the student code of conduct right now. Uh, obviously, today's Monday, and I uh, just saw the video yesterday. So working through the appropriate processes and steps. So, and I will say Gavin, Gavin Adcock is, is suspended indefinitely. 
there was a lot of anger on social media from fans, former players over the video. And I imagine as athletic director, you probably heard some of that. Did anybody email you directly, any donors, et cetera, make their displeasure over that specific incident? Did they make that known to you? Yeah, well, I, I hear from people all the time. So um, I would just share with you that obviously, as you can imagine, you know, what was shown on that video, um, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable and um, it's, it's being handled and we're not gonna have that issue again. So um, I think it's safe to say that, that my thoughts are consistent with others and um, we're not gonna have that issue again. Jared, is there a concern about recruiting when you let go of a head coach and is there a timetable that you'd like to have a new head coach? Yeah. Because I know it's pretty tough yeah. when recruits aren't sure who's going to be the next head coach. Yeah, listen, anytime you have a football uh, or any coach, matter of fact, in season and there's a recruiting aspect, of course, it, it brings a different set of challenges. Um, I would tell you, I, I think we have an unbelievable uh, school here, unbelievable opportunity for young men and women for all sports to come here. Uh, when you look at the chance to play in some of the most, if not the best fans uh, in the country and have a chance to be supported, particularly here at Paulson, with the tradition we have, uh, the question I keep saying is, is why wouldn't you want to come here? So yeah, I mean, anytime you know relationships are built with coaches, it, it, it's tough. And uh, Coach Lansford is, is a great person, is a great man, as I describe. But um, we're selling Georgia Southern. Uh, this place is bigger than me and bigger than any place um, or any person, I should say, that, that's either me or before me. And so um, I have great confidence that our current staff continue to recruit, and obviously the new staff coming in will have a chance to, to pick up those relationships. Lindsey Goff with WTOC. Um, was Coach Lunsford fired for cause or without cause? Yeah, he's fired for convenience. And uh, how did the team receive it when you talked well, to Well, you know, I, I share with the team anytime um, you have a coach, a mentor, a role model that um, is removed from their position. Um, I told them it's okay to it's okay to, to be hurt. It's okay to to have a uh, you know a wave or a range of emotions. That's normal. That's 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 human. So. Um, but we were empathetic with them and said we're here to serve them and help them any way we can. Um, but also put a charge into them about we have a lot of unfinished business. We have eight games left. All the goals we have, uh, we set the year out, obviously wanting to achieve, are still there. And so really it's on them. They don't, they don't owe me anything. They owe themselves and their, their families and all the guys that came before them. Um, and so uh, it really was more saying, hey, listen, we're always here for you, here to support you, but we have unfinished business. How did you arrive at the decision who would serve as the interim head coach? Yeah, well, Coach Whitley, uh, going back to what I mentioned earlier, I mean, Coach Whitley, um, he knows what Georgia Southern football is all about. And you have someone that was a successful, very successful high school coach, head coach, and had a chance, and he's made an impact here. And I'll tell you, a big part of that is is the guys respect him, and the guys obviously uh, know Coach Whitley very well, not only just his secondary group. And so, um, to me, it was a fairly easy decision because I think he's the best person for the job. And I told the staff, and I told the guys last night that he – um, you know, he's in charge right now, and I'm going to support him. My job is to support him the best I can, and I have a ton of confidence in him, and he's going to do a terrific job. Did the players receive – I know a lot of emotions yeah. going on, but did they receive that news pretty well that someone they know yeah. would be taking over? Yeah, I can't speak for him, but I'll tell you this. I mean, I think even before, you know, obviously yesterday, you know, Coach Whitley has unbelievable relationships with our student-athletes, and there's a, there's a, a mutual respect there. And so uh, I think yesterday was probably a manifestation of, of their relationships. Is planning to hire a search firm? It's to be determined right now, Lindsay. Um, I've got to get together. Obviously, yesterday's focus was on our student athletes and the change. This week, we'll focus on trying to, get to assemble a search committee, and then we'll kind of go from there. So, do you have a set time when you would like to name a coach after the season, before well, think, the season's over? Yeah, I mean, I, I think ideally, I mean, you, obviously, the coaches you're talking to, assistant head coaches, have current responsibilities. So, um, you can't say it's never, but but I think it's probably highly unlikely during the regular season, we'll name somebody. But, um, you know, obviously the benefit of starting the process now is you can have conversations and, and start some, some preliminary work. Frank Solkowski, WJCL. Uh, this is always going to be a topic brought up whenever there's a new football coach at Georgia Southern. Yeah. Uh, the option offense. Yeah. Stay, go, is that a priority when you're doing yeah. a search? Where are we at with that? Yeah, I want to find a CEO, Frank, and um, – you know, obviously the, 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 the offense the coach runs will be highly, um, you know, scrutinized or, or cheered for. But to me, we're trying to find a CEO, someone that's going to develop young men of character on and off the field and have success on the gridiron. So to me, 
it's all about finding a CEO. Um, and then obviously what offense they run, and quite frankly, what defense they run is just as important, but we're trying to find a CEO. How much do the fans play into this decision, I guess? Yeah. Obviously, you want to make the best decision for the team, but they're the ones that buy the tickets and yeah. ultimately support the university. Listen, we have the best fans in the country. And what I'll share with you, Lindsay, you're right. Like, I don't have a job without our fans. So our fans mean a lot to us. And I learned a long time ago when you make decisions um, and, you, and you lead out front, you're not going to obviously please everybody. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, that's, that's one of the best parts of being here. That's why I came here is we have the passion, um, quite frankly, that a lot of the schools I've been at previously in the SEC, and, and I would say at times more than those schools, because everyone is passionate about Georgia Southern and Georgia Southern football. And so um, you're not going to make everybody happy, obviously, with a hire. But, but I'm tasked with obviously trying to find the best fit for Georgia Southern. And so our fans' feedback means a lot. Um, and then you get it all across the board. And you just got to filter it through and, and ultimately make the best decision. How do you determine who the next head coach will be? I know you've gonna, you're going to have some kind of a committee. Yeah. But ultimately, it's got to come down to you and yeah. what you feel is best for the program. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, listen, Josh, it's no different than other searches you know, that we've administered since I've been here. Um, you know, it'll be a team effort with a committee, but you're right. I mean, ultimately, the, the buck stops with me, and, and I welcome that, right? And, and I think that when you look at um, – I think one of the advantages coming into this role was 20 years in the SEC and four different institutions. There's a lot of contacts, and um, when you go through a search process, you utilize those contacts, and I'm very confident that uh, when all's said and done, we're going to have a great candidate here. Even after, or I'm sorry, even before the video surfaced, there had been some chatter online and among fans that the program had sort of lost its blue collar image. There was that sense out there. How important is it to not just get a winning coach, but a coach that sort of wins in the way that fans expect? Like how important is sort of restoring that brand in addition to just finding a good coach? Yeah, I would tell you, you know, first and foremost, fans want to win, right? And um, that's our expectation here. Uh, that's the standard we're leading to. And, um, you know, I would think that any, any, any school that has success wants to be tough, wants to be blue collar. Those are not unique uh, attributes to Georgia Southern. Uh, but I also would tell you, too, it is important. Um, discipline, as I stressed before, is extremely important. Um, just like being blue collar and tough. Um, I'm, not, I'm not worried about the, the optics of, of running something uh, that looks pretty. It's about winning ball games. At the end of the day, it's about winning ball games and developing young men of character. So that's why, to, to, to Frank's question before, um, it's easy to get hyper focused on on a certain type of offense. But we're trying to find a CEO that ultimately is going to mold young men, and that's an awesome responsibility. Um, and so I, I'm I'm very optimistic that we'll have a lot of different opportunities to look at different styles of play, different backgrounds. Uh, but this is a very attractive job, and I expect the best of the best to to have an interest. Yeah. And you've also seen both current and former players express uh, their support and admiration for Chad. And, you know, regardless of how the team has started the year, which I know is yeah. not what uh, anyone around here wanted, but they did make bowl games the last three seasons. Were you worried at all that, hey, you know, even though the start to this season maybe wasn't as good as you wanted, there was still a record of success and support that you had to contend with, uh, with, you know, keeping Chad on versus letting him go? Yeah, I think it's you know, the best way to describe that is you, you balance humility with confidence. And uh, I was confident this is the right decision for the program. Uh, again, you know, I really care what our, I really do uh, value what our former letter winners say. And again, you're never going to reach consensus on, on critical decisions oftentimes. And so uh, at the end of the day, you take all that in totality and you make the best decision for the program. And that's what my role is. My role is to do what's in the best interest of the program and the university. And um, Again, uh, I think that was, a, you know, I expressed to it earlier, that was the right decision yesterday. Jared, you've mentioned the concern that some other programs are zooming past Georgia Southern, Coastal Carolina, App, Louisiana. To be able to keep up with them, it seems like you're going to have to pay a coach what they're paying their coaches or get as close as you can. You have shown that you're able to, on the last few hires that you've had, pay significantly more than what their predecessor was making. Will this be a similar situation? And is there a dollar figure that you've got in your mind as to where you, you can go with this? Yeah. No, that's a fair question. Um, here's what I would share with you. When you look at a football staff, that while the head coach is really important, you know, just as important are you know, the, the tenant on the field assistants, the off the field staff, the string conditioning. So I, I approach it, Josh, collectively as a 
aggregate total, um, and, and then ultimately work with the coaches and the head coach on building out their staff. And sometimes it's easy to get kind of bird dog a salary, but often the, the elite coaches understand how important, just like I do. I'm, I'm not, I'm not nearly as effective or any good without great people around me. And the elite coaches understand that. And what they usually end up doing is going through the process and saying, I need this to get this person. And then sometimes that works its way back to their salary. In essence, they're willing to be flexible with their salary predicated on their, on their staff they're building out. And that's the approach I've always taken and look at things in totality. Um, I will share you coming off a record fundraising year. Um, we have a lot of momentum. We talk about raising money for the indoor facility. We have the convocation center coming online. Um, Eagle Nation continues to show up and we continue to, to obviously uh, need more and more of their help. And so um, we're going to be competitive with the market. Um, just because you pay the most doesn't always equate to wins, but we're going to be aggressive with our search. And I'm not going into the search with a mindset of, well, we can't afford this person. We're going to aim high. As I said before, when I was introduced. If we aim high and miss high, so be it. But we're not settling. And so I'll do anything I can uh, related to fundraising and getting the revenues needed to get the coach in here that we need. Um, this is a big hire, and, and we're going to turn over every stone possible, and that includes resources. Jared, one more question. Um, we know that football is the front porch of a yeah. university, especially here in the South. How active is the university as far as the president and, and no. the folks on Sweetheart Circle uh, with this decision and, and this search? Yeah, listen, I'm blessed, and I share this at our board meeting Friday. I feel like I work for the best president in the, in the U.S., and uh, at five institutions, um, I haven't worked with a president that is uh, just all around, just, just an unbelievable person as he is a professional. And Dr. Marrero has become a friend, and he's someone that's, uh, that I rely on. He's someone that I um, use as a sounding board. And, and so uh, it was my full decision, but like anything, you know, I always will ask for advice and, and ask for input. But and then the day he's made it clear, obviously, that he entrusts me with this department. And um, listen, I think one of the great things about Georgia Southern, there's a lot of great things about Georgia Southern, but one of them is, is the ability to work across the aisle and its ability to all pull on the same side of the rope. That is invaluable. Um, there's probably schools you can think of in the country that have unlimited resources, but due to various, um, whether it be bureaucratic ways or lack of teamwork, whatever, they're not, that's not equating to wins. One of the best things about Georgia Southern right now is the alignment from the president on down. And it starts with Dr. Marrero and it starts with everybody else on cabinet on down. And so um, I look at it as one big team. And I think that's what's so important is when you're bringing a head coach in here, you're presenting in a united front. And I'm just telling you, the older I get, and this, I mentioned before and I got introduced, a big reason why I came here was the alignment from the top down. Um, and listen, we're, we're, we're headed in the right direction. We're heading an upward trajectory. And again, Dr. Morrell gets a lot of credit and deserves a lot of credit for that. But I also tell you, athletic-wise, we're, we're in parallel with the university. And, and that's what excites me. So yeah, you're always taking into account um, various you know, opinions of which, but Dr. Morrell has been a great, uh, great friend and a great um, you know, obviously boss, and, and I, uh, I appreciate him. Obviously, this is still very fresh, um, but you mentioned yeah. how desirable this job is. Have yeah. you received any early interest? And just how important is it that the football team is successful for the rest of the, I guess, overall good of the athletic department? Yeah, so I'll answer your first question. I, I, uh, I've got a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, text messages and, and missed voice, uh, voicemails to, to return. Uh, I've got to get caught up on that. So, uh, listen, there'll be, there'll be uh, a lot of interest. And... I think that also goes back to uh, the school. Listen, this is an unbelievable opportunity. This is an unbelievable job. Um, and so my expectations going in, we're getting the best of the best. Um, and I feel very confident that we're going to get that. As it relates to the last eight games of the year, listen, this is critically important, right? It's critically important. I told the, the seniors last night that, you know, when they, when they started here at Georgia Southern, I'm sure none of them envisioned, you know, going through their senior year and having a coaching change. But, but listen, at the end of the day, so much of our role and our job as educators is to prepare our young men and women here in the department for life after sport. And I think one of the best lessons you can help them uh, learn and develop is, is dealing with adversity. Um, and I shared with our captains last night, I shared with our team that adversity is going to hit you in life. It's going to hit you right in the face at times. And it's about how you respond to it. And so there's a lot of times in life that things you can't control, they happen, but you I can control that. You, you, the three controllables we talk about, attitude, effort, and how you treat people. So this is a chance to, to, to obviously persevere through adversity. 
And listen, everything we want to do is still on the table, right? And so I have full confidence in Coach Whitley and the coaching staff and the, and the support staff and our young men in the program to, to continue to battle and to continue to go out there and get their full effort. And listen, our fans, I know Eagle Nation's behind our group of student athletes, and so I'm fired up for Saturday. I'm ready to get after it. And uh, this time of year, man, it's just it's, it's football season. So every, every Saturday brings a new set of excitement.